Take a look at the way they line up. Pole, of course, has gone to Simon Kane in the Rolt Perkins. From position number two, it's Mark Scaife in the Spa. From three, Drew Price in one of the Rolts. From four, our own Neils on Wheels Crompton. From position five, it's Mark Poole in a strike. Starting out of position six, Mark Larkham in car number 17. From seven, it's 73, Mark McLaughlin. From eight, number nine, John Briggs in a Rolt. From nine, number 11, Tony Blanche. And rounding out the top ten, car number four, Roger Martin. Time to go racing. Ready for the start now. Round number three at the ACL Australian Formula One Championship and Simon Kane off pole position gets beaten here at the start by Mark Scaife. So that was a, a fairly average start from Simon Kane. He's going to find it difficult here over the distance as they swing out into Dunlop Loop for the first time. Good start there from Mark Scaife. Simon Kane back a couple of spots. Neil Crompton in behind him as they work the back straight now for the first time. 40 laps the distance of round number three on the tiny confines of Amaru Park Raceway. And joining us today for this round, Larry Perkins and Richard Davidson. Welcome aboard, guys. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. I think you'd prefer to have seen a better start from Simon Kane, perhaps, Larry? Yes, he uh, got the, uh, the clutch out very early, but it seemed to bog a bit, and uh, uh, Mark uh, overtook him when he got into second gear. Very good start from uh, Mark Scaife. Mark Poole also up very, very smartly as they go across the line. But at this stage, everything falling into the hands of uh, Mark Scaife. Simon came back there in third spot as they go to the top of Bitcher Pave Hill and drop into Dunlop Loop. Neil Crompton back to fourth. And Mark Poole doing a good job there in the strike. Got away very, very smartly, Richard. Yes, he's doing an excellent job, Mark. Uh, my observation of that car is it's uh, less than fantastic as far as its stability is concerned. And uh, my concern for Mark will be whether he'll make the 40 laps on tyres. He's been working his tyres very hard through qualifying. They head down to the lake corner, the right-hander, stop and go turn. Oop. Troubles for Mark Scape, maybe Mr. Gear. And that puts Simon Kane up to second, puts Mark Poole to the lead in this round three. And I'd say the race for Mark Scape is over, heading across. Yes, pulling the car out of competition. So he parks the car and that puts Poole in the race lead in the Shrike. Here's Simon Kane. There's the man who led the race, Mark Scaife. Looks like he may have missed a gear or something has gone on there because it ran out of power immediately. There's Neils on wheels, car number seven, Gilux Auto Color Machine. And of course, just back behind him, uh, Drew Price. Once again, the State Pollution Control Commission officers have been monitoring noise here over the weekend, as you can see, with warnings and black flags being waved to anyone and everyone exceeding a 95 decibel limit under full power at the start finishing line. I guess it probably prompts the question to New South Wales Premier Nick Griner, so why even worry about Eastern Creek? Take my word, Nick, it won't be uh, any quieter at Eastern Creek. You can forget World Championship bikes and sports cars at 95 dBs. I think Larry would agree it doesn't happen anywhere in the world. I think you could also forget NASCAR, Indy cars, Formula One and touring cars that probably need about 100 dBs to survive. Problems here for Neil Crompton. A spin there by uh, Neil Crompton at the end near the lake corner. Uh, that will cost him severely. He's trying to uh, reverse the car and get the hell out of there. That has really taken the pressure off our race leader, Mark Poole, because in the space of only a lap or so, we had Neil Crompton closing on um, Simon Kane. Simon had a little slip. Then immediately Neil Crompton had a spin and that has just taken all the pressure off our, uh, our race leader, Mark Poole of South Australia in the Shrike, who was starting to look very, very good, very comfortable at this stage of the race with time really running out. There's the gap. Our race leader going to the top of Bitcher Pave Hill with a huge gap. Let's have a look at this on replay with Neil Crompton arriving down, just losing it. Very, very simple. As you can see, going through on the outside was Drew Price, so Drew's picked up a spot very quickly. And that was it. It all happened so quickly. Drew Price is losing some fluid out of his uh, engine too, so I don't know uh, whether he's in serious trouble or not. 1.8 seconds between Drew Price and Simon Kane. He's certainly catching him. Yes, Drew Price's car now throwing out a lot of steam. They run down to the lake corner and here comes the challenge as Simon Kane now down on the inside of Drew Price to take back second place in this race. 
problem for Drew Price, but he will uh, soldier on, hopefully, and finish back in third with a couple of laps still to run in round three of the ACL Engines Gold Star Championship round from Sydney's Amaru Park. Oh, we've had car number nine. It's John Briggs. John Briggs go off into the wall over there, into the tyre wall. Fortunately, uh, John's quite OK, as you can see. He's really given the car a shunt, though. The man we're watching at the moment, Mark Poole of South Australia, is on his final lap working his way down the back straight. An impressive win here today at uh, Sydney's Amaru Park Raceway. I don't know if many people would have, uh, before the race, given a victory to, to Mark Poole, but it's motor racing's an amazing sport, isn't it? Would have been very long odds, I'd say, Mark. But he's uh, earned it. He led, led every lap, uh, or not every lap, but... Uh, he's close enough. Close enough for every lap. Had a lot of pressure from Simon Kane and uh, survived. Last corner coming up and the chequered flag at the ready. Round number three of the ACL Gold Star Formula One Series for Australia. And the win, of course, goes to the South Australian driver, Mark Poole. Looks like Simon Kane is going to get across the line for second spot. Drew Price will probably soldier on for third and Neil Crompton for fourth. There's our race winner. And our congratulations going to round three winner, Mark Poole of South Australia. Second is Simon Kane and the Roald Perkins. Third to Drew Price. Finishing fourth was our own Neils on wheels. And rounding out the five, Mark Larkham. Welcome back to Sydney's Amaru Park Raceway. We're preparing for the Toledo Tool Sports Sedan Series. Pole, of course, going to Des Wall and the Supra. Bob Tyndall sharing the front row. Some very quick motor cars about ready to go. Eight laps and off the line. Des Wall, but I think it's Tyndall maybe on the outside. They're jumping out of the queue just back behind the leaders. The Jag away smartly as well as they head up to the top of Nissan Skyline for the first time. Keith Carling with a problem on the line. Didn't look like he got very far before the car slowed considerably, like he may have had a gearbox, axle problem, something of that nature. But there he is. Oh, oh it's Keith. all happening. Problems there for Keith Carling. The car certainly hasn't gone too far in today's Toledo Tools exercise. As we pick them up running downhill to the left-hander. Gerwald. Problem there with the mobile concrete pumping Tirana. Excavations uh, through the infield there as we pick them up coming down to the lake corner. There's Wall, Bob Tyndall, Barry Jamison sits back behind them as they come in for the completion of the first lap and seven to go as they go across the line and bring horsepower into play as they head up Bitcher Pave Hill. Hands out the window acknowledging the yellow flag. No one's allowed to pass while the Keith Carling car is stranded on the side of the road. Deswall leading, Bob Tyndall second in the all-care air conditioning entries. Mark McLaughlin up there as well in the uh, Jag today. Calabon entry. Good to see Mark having a go in that car. Varying his, uh, his drives between the Australian Drivers' Championship and the open wheeler and the big horsepower sports sedan. Spoke to him about a couple of weeks ago when we were up at Lakeside when he had a, a try of the car up there. He said, what's it like? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> said it all, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's got bags of horsepower and compared to the open wheeler, no grip. Thrill a minute. These two Alcare air conditioning entries looking sharp as they exit uh, the turn and head up Bitcher Pave Hill again. There's Wall getting away a little from uh, Bob Tyndall. It's Barry it's Jam oh, Jamison sorry. there running in third and uh, Mark McLaughlin in fourth spot. Nice looking car, the uh, Motec entry, isn't it? Actually, the uh, sporty sedans have really picked up the show in the last uh, 12 months. Some splendid looking machinery. Amaru Park, a pretty demanding little course for them with that much horsepower and very, very twitchy machines. Down to the lake corner. There's Wall. You can see the gap now over the field. There's Wall going through. Tyndall, Jamison is the next one through. Followed by Mark McLaughlin and the Jag. And then the gap back to the Masters. They have really opened up a gap over the rest of the field. It's almost daylight. And I will assure you there are other competitors. <laughs> there they are. But Wall will lead them into Dunlop Loop. In what must be one stunning Supra. Tyndall, teammate sits back behind him, of course, in the uh, Alcare Commodore. Barry Jamison has been attacking him since the race started. And a 
Ponder and on the way down to uh, the right-hander at the lake. Probably the best uh, sports sedan series, domestic series, the uh, Toledo Tool Series here at uh, Amaru Park. We're about half distance now, lap four of eight, and Wall leading from Tyndall and Jamison. And a very big crowd here on the bleachers today at uh, Sydney's Amaru Park Raceway. An opportunity to see some of the support divisions for uh, motorsport. And good to see them on television as well. Unusually. It's good to see uh, we followed your progress. Uh, and it was stunning for a while in the uh, ACL uh, Gold Star round. Thought you were in there, son, with a, with a show for maybe a second or... Fair. Brain fade. Not, not good, not good. But these guys are doing a good job. They're right where they are at the moment. There's uh, some full of oil, and uh, for the unwary who plot out there, it bites. Barry Jamison not having any trouble like that. Coming up with three laps to go. There's Wall still leading uh, Bob Tindall and Barry Jamison. Shame that Keith Carling's Toledo Tools Mazda is not in this battle. The car would have been pretty competitive, I should think. Barry Jamison working away at the moment on a plot that will uh, get him into the next position. He's trying pretty hard. There's Wall's really got the pressure off now a little bit. He's put a gap in there, and that's what he needs. Interesting how these guys have been able to get away from Mark McLaughlin as well. As the Jag is usually uh, a fairly competitive piece of machinery in sports at Antrim around Amaru Park. I don't know how many years old the Jag is. I should check, but the colour bond entry has been circulating Australian racetracks for... It's got to be close to two decades. It's been around for, for a fair while. 500 horsepower, snapping and jumping there coming out of the corner as Barry Jamison tries to claw it a bit of road. Coming up, I think, with uh, two laps to go. There's Jamison going through. Our leader really uh, has bolted. There's Wall. Tyndall still able to uh, contain Jamison. McLaughlin and the uh, Jags sits back in fourth spot. About a lap and a half still to run in the Toledo Tools event here this afternoon at uh, Sydney's Amaru Park. The downhill run to the left-hander at Honda. Great shot there. Little kink there in what is, has to be the shortest straight in Australia. Down to an absolute stop-start corner at the lake. I think um, we went through this experiment once before as the yellow flags indicate that the Alpha, the old Alpha's gone straight ahead and into the barrier there. If these guys are getting around with one lap to go now in uh, whatever it is, just in the 50 odd second mark, there's something uh, less than around about uh, seven or eight seconds, there's the Alpha, where the car's actually straight. So you spend your whole time at Amaru Park just seesawing around, which is why the place is so ugly on touring car yes. tyres. Uh, that was Bob McDonald's. Alpha that's gone straight ahead at the stop go corner. Oh, there's another one with stripe and problems here, have we, for our race leader? There's Wall, who maybe was allowing that car to sort himself out. He was uh, every yeah. which way and very loose. He buttoned right off, I thought. Yeah. He might have thrown it away for a minute, unless he had a gear selection hassle or something like that. But the lead four cars have really bunched up now as they come down to the stop corner for the last time. So it's Des Wall, Bob Tindall, Barry Jamison, Mark McLaughlin. One corner to run, everybody trying as hard as they can, but Des Wall's going to hang on and survive. Ooh. Check it flag time for Des Wall. He takes it, Bob Tindall picks up second, Jamison is third, and McLaughlin fourth. Great uh, one-two there for the Alcare air conditioning cars in the Toledo Tool sports sedan race this afternoon at uh, Sydney's Amaru Park. Time to check out and see how they finished on our Toyota race score. Oh, what a feeling. Oh, what a race. Des Wall, your race winner. Bob Tindall finished second, Barry Jamison third, McLaughlin fourth and fifth was Terry Sheil. And we'll be back at Amaru in just a sec. Park Raceway. We're preparing now for the Goodyear production car series. And we're only about 10 seconds off the start. Steve Masterton sitting there on polar alongside Scott in the Bridgestone entry, then Fitzgerald and Roland Hill in the second row. And they're off and racing. Steve Masterton and the Peter Warren Ford makes an absolute blinder. Gets off the start as they head up the hill for the first time. A great start from uh, Masterton, and he will clear them at the top of the hill. Drops down into Dunlop Loop for the first time. It's Gerald away smartly, as in fact uh, gobbled up Scott. 
as they swing through the turn and now work the back straight for the first time. So Masterton, who today also is carrying our Dulux Auto Colour race cam. I think he's quite surprised himself, young Steve, with the way he's been able to get up on the front row. He'll exit that turn on the way down to the loop and we take our Dulux ICI Auto Colour race cam. Show you uh, Steve Masterton at work in the cockpit of the Ford. A little skatey there out by the wall, coming along the short straight, in for the completion of the uh, first lap. And he will lead them across the strike, a fellow who, of course, had big reputation here in uh, touring cars in the Group C days. Here's the dice for second, Peter Fitzgerald and Scott, side by side. Fitzgerald, of course, in the Goodyear entry. Scott fairly close to him in the Bridgestone car. Terrific start from Steve. And he's done quite a bit of testing and homework at the track. And it's obviously paying off. Peter Fitzgerald there in second place in the Commodore. And then Scott in the Bridgestone entry. And as we've mentioned on a number of occasions, this class represents a real tyre battle. Scott up on the inside of Fitzgerald on the exit. Didn't the Dulux race cam graphically show the uh, difference in speed between a virtually uh, a road car and, say, for example, a Group A car? Just unbelievable. A bit of cut and thrust, too, as Masterton and the Peter Warren Ford entry gets away. Fitzgerald out of second. Scott is third. Ten laps. The distance of today's round. Fourth, fifth and sixth. Roland Hill, I notice, in there going for a, a big run here in the second of the um, the Goodyear entries. Kent Yulden also involved. Kent, of course, has been a standout performer in the uh, Australian Production Car Championship. But he's doing a little tough here today. Ooh, Hill very much sideways. Need some tyres with grip. He might be on the right ones here today. Down to Honda Corner. Good scrap. The second, third, and fourth, fifth battle is on for young and old, but Steve's just driven away from yeah, the bunch. Here's Mal Rose in car number 44. Well, Mal's done plenty of laps around Am Amaru, and he's got this car working pretty well. Here's Yildon up on the inside of Hill. Not much between them. Kent's been the standout performer in the class in a number of the production car championship rounds. Here he is caught in a a little ham in the sandwich routine here. Trying to get by uh, Mal Rose. Roland Hill has arrived on the scene in the number three Goodyear entry to make life even more unbearable for him. And all the time, Steve Masterton is absolutely running away from the flock. Yielding this time down the inside. Moment of truth for Mal Rose. Sorry, pal. But there was enough racing room there going into the corner. That unsteady uh, caught uh, Mal just a little on the wrong foot. And as if anything helped uh, Roland Hill. Was Kent uh, playing the the aggressor, but he's through. Yielded Hill. Next is Mal Rose. Scott is the next one through. And there's plenty of activity even back behind this group. Second and third continue. Tony Scott of Queensland in the Bridgestone entry. Just ahead of him is of course uh, Peter Fitzgerald. Fitzies and other guys blocked a few uh, Ks around Amaru Park over the years. Sports sedans and of course the... Uh, it's probably done more kilometres here than just about anybody. The, as you say, the, um, the old Porsche and a variety of production cars over as long as I can remember and he's always been a front runner here this year with the Goodyear Commodore and working really hard at the moment to keep Tony Scott at bay. Scotty is right on the bumper here. Fainting a couple of passes. Oops. Oh, there's one that's uh, bogged himself. Three days of rain at uh, Amaru Park. Using the old cliche, Amaru is Aboriginal for water over rock, and there's still plenty here today. And it has clouded over in the last half hour. But Fitzy and Scott continue their scrap. Kent Yulden getting a little closer to them. Steve Masterton all the time disappearing into the distance in the Peter Warren Ford. Scotty again up on the inside of Fitzy. 
and Yildon coming on strongly. This will be, oh, I was going to say this will be an interesting was, manoeuvre, but he yeah. did it sort of quite easily. I thought it was going to be the big desperado at the end, but Tony Scott got by. Not a problem. So at the moment, got a better exit out of Honda Corner by the look of it. Yeah. Steve Masterton in the, uh, the Ford Falcon, getting away from his two Commodores, heading up Bitcher Pave Hill. Very strong class for those folks who like Ford versus Holden and cars that you can identify with. The production car boys have been able to put on some stirring racing this season. Actually, the, the whole act of the production car scene has really picked up this year compared to last year where they were waning a little. The cars were becoming very expensive, the Here's turbo the... category. Gee, Scotty's yep. really driving that hard. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's been a good thing for, for motorsport to get back to basics in this class. And um, we've got the old Holden Ford battle going. If anything, I think Tony and Peter are closing up yep. a little bit on Steve at the moment. That's Masterton on the right-hand side of screen car two. Been out of the sport for a few years, come back this year. Looking pretty strong. And uh, yeah, so what we've got is just a real representation of, uh, well, of the Australian motor market, haven't we? They're just the average vehicle without having anything exotic in the way of turbos or cars with price tags in the order of fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars in a category I guess that the fans up there can relate, relate to. As Neil said, they're all starting to close just a little now on Steve Masterton with about two and a half laps still to go in this Goodyear production car race from uh, Amaru Park and Yildon in the Festo Falcon. There's about a two-second gap, Masterton, to Scott. Steve might either just be saying, OK, time to play conservative, or he might have used the best edge on his rubber. But there's Oops. no question, as car five zips around, <laughs> you have a go. <laughs> yeah, him. Ta Tash stale matters, and they sure are. Well, Tash is, uh, has got away from uh, the flock at the top of uh, Dunlop Loop. Hopefully, there's Mark. Young Scotty, Fitzgerald, Kent Yildon is the next one through. I think Roland Hill closing a little on those. You're right, the, the western or northwestern horizon here is unbelievably black at the moment. It was a forecast for fine, so that usually means it's a little rain. Mm hmm. Lap and a half to run, Steve Masterton, the Peter Warren Ford. Zips away down to the lake corner. He'll receive the signal, one to go next time around. Scott's done a good job in the uh, Bridgestone entry. And these three guys are really hard at it, looking uh, for third spot. Fitzy, Newhilton, and Roland just rolled on into the wall there, but bounced off. Narrow rear track Commodore now. Last lap. I think we're set for a fairly exciting uh, last lap of the Goodyear production car race. Sideways was uh, Fitzy. Yildon has closed up and Roland Hill playing the aggressor. As they exit there and head down the back straight. But I don't think they're going to be able to haul in Steve Masterton. Gee, Tony Scott really disappearing from that group as well. So he's, he's putting the pressure on, but I don't think there's any chance of him getting there unless there's a real disaster for the leader. This scrap, sorry. Sorry. Late corner for the final time now. And Steve Masterton, who's carried our Dulux Auto Color race cam. Peter Warren Ford comes out of the last corner, and you'll see the chequered flag coming out here on the left. So Masterton leads them across into victory lane. He wins the Goodyear production car race. Scotty will pick up second, Fitzgerald third. Yulden will be fourth, and Roland Hill will finish in fifth. We'll check those out for you now on our race score, but uh, congratulations go to Steve Masterton. Our Shell race score shows that Steve Masterton and the Peter Warren Ford, the winner over Tony Scott, Peter Fitzgerald in third, Kent Yule in fourth, and Roland Hill rounds out the five. We'll be back at Amaru Park in just a sec. Pole position, car number seven, a 64.8. Gavin Croft alongside car number 18 on the second row. Greg Topfer, a 105.16. Alongside him, John Burke from the Central Coast. Position 5, 21 is Gary Cook. Alongside him, Ben Ruggles, car number 25. From seven, Frank Kleinick, 77. Wayne Bell is next, followed then by Greg Smith.
and rounding out the top ten, Andrew Wilson. And watch these things lurch, slip and slide. It should be fun. Red light on. And they explode <laughs> off the starting line. Car number 18 gets the jump. Gavin Croft, Peter Hopwood alongside. Hopwood is the man that you saw here a few... Oh, look at this. We've got all sorts of drama. <laughs> oh, we've got five HQs side by side. Now three of them in the wall. Unbelievable start to a motor race. They're OK. They're out of harm's way. I've never seen so many cars go up the hill together. It, it just took so long for them to stop leaning on each other. Well, they've all dropped down into Dunlop Loop. Hopefully, we'll see what's happened down there. They've got through Dunlop Loop. Hoppy decided that we'd come up with the all-time friction brake. Let's have a look at this again shortly. As the cars wander through Sutton's corner, wander being the operative Opera. word. Let's have a look here's at the, the roof. Here's the start. Gavin Croft sideways. That's Peter Hopwood in his door. So Croft just keeps turning right. Hoppy's jammed in there. He's got nowhere to go. And it's going at the top of the hill. He didn't take his boot out of it. So he's let them all hit the wall, sort themselves out. There's five across there at one stage. And he's able to rejoin the race. Well, that was the interesting start to the armor all. <laughs> Appropriate name. They'll need a bit of the product after this. They're coming in for the completion of what is the longest first lap in history around Amaru Park, heading up Bitchapave again. We'll show you the uh, shortly that the field is 15 darts out of somewhere or other. Barry Hughes gets Gavin Croft's car up against the uh, signage there on the side of the track. There's Wayne Bell, car number three. Yes, I can smell brakes already and they've only done two laps. <laughs> what was left of their pads is now in the atmosphere, that's it. <laughs> I'm sure I've seen a lot of these as the silver tops at Swanson Street. You have. There's, there's one out there that this morning was running around with a vacant sign on the roof. <laughs> and the scrutineers made him take it off. An aerodynamic device. Let's give you an indication of the size of the field. As from the top of the hill at uh, the Bitcher Pave, you can, there are the leaders going through. Still car number 31, John Burke leading from Gary Cook. 28 of them. Didn't know there was that many left. I think they might be down to about 26 now. They've parked a couple around the circuit. A race leader a little sideways there. Berkey's still doing the job here. Well, Cookie's getting closer to him. He's he certainly covered the back of the Kingswood. <laughs> He's driving around the inside at Sutton's Corner. Here's a go. What's this? Thought he was going to try and a little zip up the inside there. Would have had the pair of them around. These guys have done plenty of laps around this course. Car number three back in the third spot at the moment, Wayne Bell. Whoops, here goes Cookie. He's jumped on the brakes. It's not going to do anything for him, though. He'd have had to use everything then. It would have been handbrake and <laughs> footbrake and gearbox, anything that would stop it. Now, he's got to either carry on here, and that's exactly what he's going to do as he lunges down here on the inside. Crunch. Ooh, cop that, Berkey. Coming up for the last lap now, so we've got a heck of a race going. In the Armour All Kingswood class. To the top of Bitcher Pave. And Gary Cook is your race leader. The world's biggest tacker on the top of the dash. All he needs now is the dice hanging from the mirror. There's something rattling as they exit the loop. I tell you what, Cookie has bolted. Burke still runs in second spot. I thought it was my imagination for the first five laps, but you can distinctly hear something. I think it might be the number plate holder. Or a piston, or a crankshaft. Or... Well, they're out of uh, Honda Corner on the run down to the lake. It's probably more likely the brakes. <clears throat> the General's finest. Here we are. Gee, you arrived down there quickly, Burke. But I don't think there's too much you can do about Cook. He's got the head tilted. He's, he's fair dinkum. Coming into the last corner, the armor all checkered flag is ready to come out, and it'll be Cook going across the line. There he goes. Cook picks up second spot. And probably across the line to pick up third. The driver of car number three, Wayne Bell. Well, an interesting class. The family Kingswoods. Five laps was the distance. Let's check them out on the scoreboard. 
Gary Cook, no doubt about the winner of the race. He applied some pressure from uh, on John Burke and the uh, a lap and a half out from the finish. Shell race score shows Cook has beaten Burke. Bell finishes in third. Benny Ruggles in fourth. Racing Park Raceway, we're preparing now for the Amscar Series take number two. Today's racing, of course, broken into two 10-lap heats. Let's look at some of the action from a very exciting heat number one. Racing now, heat one of the Amscars and getting off the line, it's Colin Bond, Tony Longhurst in sheer wheel spin, scape up the inside in the Nissan, looking for racing room. Jones goes with him on the outside and Brian Callahan gets away very smartly indeed. To the top of Vichipay and it'll be Tony Longhurst down on the inside of Colin Bond, Alan Jones sneaks through on the inside as well, that catches Mark Gibbs one out and two back. This time as they exit the loop, it's Longhurst will take charge with teammate Jones and the Benson and Hedges Sierra running in second spot and scape up very quickly on the inside to third. The run downhill to the left-hander and here's Scaife putting the nose of the Nissan up on the inside of Jones and Jones going after Longhurst. We take our Nissan track cam as we head down to the right-hander and here we're riding with the third place Mark Scaife and the Nissan as the two Benson and Hedges Sierras away as they come back for the completion of the first lap. Longhurst, Jones and Mark Scaife in the Nissan. Scaife this time down on the inside of Tony Longhurst. Without maligning Alan, I think the, the most difficult thing that he's had to come to terms with with this type of car is the fact that unlike the cars that he grew up in and was so successful in, you've got to be so gentle with these things. Forceful, but gentle and not abuse the tyres. And I think Alan would agree it's very difficult to come to terms with the rotten things sometimes. Look at Tony Longhurst out in the marbles and fighting very hard with Mark Scaife. Scaife pokes the nose of the Nissan back on the inside of the B&8 Sierra as they exit Dunlop Loop. Pretty close stuff this. He's got the lie for the next turn though and will enforce all the way and Bondy's looking in there for a little shot of the action. Couldn't get through. I think Jones would be on the stickiest stuff available yeah. today. No Tyrell as He's Longhurst. Tony. Down on the inside. He's got it all what? slithering. He uses the old rally technique in here. Throw it in, see what comes out the other side. But the chequered flag is about to come out for Australia's Alan Jones. He'll lead them across the strike. Second spot across the line will go to Tony Longhurst. Third to Colin Bond. Fourth going to Mark Scaife. And a very entertaining opening heat. Which brings us, of course, to heat number two. Let's have a look at the way they line up on the grid. Pole for heat two of the Amscar series goes to Tony Longhurst in car number 25. Starting at a position number two is Colin Bond, of course, in the Caltex era. From three, car number three, Mark Scaife lines up again in the Nissan. From four, number 20, Alan Jones in the second of the B and eight Sierras. From 537, Brian Callahan, great qualifying performance. From 621, Mark Gibson, the GIO, Sutton's entry. From 727 is Terry Finnegan. From position number eight is Bob Pearson in the Commodore. From nine, Trevor Ashby in another Commodore. And rounding out the 10 is Peter Dillman in a BMW. A small but competitive field. 10 seconds to go before the start of the second Amscar heat. And will they escape the weather? Longhurst, Bond, Safe, Jones, Mark Gibbs. Red light on. Should be a great start. Tony starts to creep a little, gets the jump initially Scaife, from Bondi, Scaife. but now Bond gets some grip and Scaife up the inside as Alan Jones creates another barbecue and Scaife the leader as they head to the top of the hill. A great start from Mark. In fact, it'll probably take a mathematician to try and work out who's actually won the series if they stay this way, but it'll be Mark Scaife into Dunlop Blue. Bond up on the inside. Mark Gibbs away to a great start once again in the GIO Commodore. And as they come down the back straight for the first time, it's the Nissan Jet Jock out in front. Yeah, it's a good start from Mark and Colin Bond into second place. It's a better start for him now in this heat. And Mark Gibbs, the big runner on the outside, but in the marbles and up on the outside of the Rimmel Strip. Scaife leading, Bond second. Alan Jones having a run <laughs> looking down the inside of his old teammate, or is it Tony? No, it's Alan. Then Tony Longhurst behind him. Brian Callahan getting in there and arguing also with Mark Gibbs. Coming round for the completion of the first lap. Nine sprint circuits still to go in heat number two of the James Hardy Building Products Amscar Series. And if it dumps rain while they're all out there on slicks, it's going to be fairly entertaining to say the least. Mark Scaife leads into Dunlop Loop the second time around. There's Jonesy on the inside of uh, Colin Bond. They exit the loop. Longhurst one back behind them. Be a good birthday present if Mark Scaife can deliver a win here this afternoon for team boss Freddie Gibson. Turned half century yesterday. This is very strong under brakes. Bondi, what a great year he's having. I think his mum and dad would agree he's a late bloomer. 
Here's AJ down on the inside and will take Bond. So Jones now moves to second. Can he haul in the nimble Nissan? Plenty of wheel spin exiting the corner. And Colin left room. If Allen was able to outbreak, then the opportunity was there and he did it. Pulled it cleanly and now Tony Longhurst goes by Colin and moves into third place. They're all still chasing Mark Scaife at the top of the hill. We're two laps into it. it was gentleman Jim Richards winning the opening round of the Shell Ultra Touring Car Championship here at Amaru Park for Nissan. Happy hunting ground for the Japanese Mark. Now, whether Mark can embark on some defensive driving when uh, AJ starts to get uh, a little closer to him. We'll wait and see. Longhurst very quickly has picked up Alan Jones, though, as you can see. Out of that corner, down to the right-hander at the lake. And as Neil mentioned, black clouds just have rolled in over Amaru Park Raceway. There's Mark Scaife, Alan Jones right behind him this time. He'd better get his elbows up for this spot on the track because that's where Jones will be able to squeeze through. But Mark's got him covered for the moment. Look at the go Tony. And he will probably get something out of this. He oh. sure does. He speedways it over the top of the hill. So the other BH team partner has a crack now at car three. Mark's driving very tidily at the moment, so all this aggression from Tony and Alan will ultimately result in a lack of grip in those things. Down to the lake corner under brakes. Now Scaife in the Nissan trying to fend off a horde of Sierras. The front straight again. Now he'll try and move across to the inside of the track and not leave an opening here because Longhurst is going to go right around the outside of him. And how easy was that? Jones actually wants a slice of the action as well. Here's the action on our Nissan track cam riding on the bottom side of Tony Long... I'm sorry, on uh, Mark Scaife's Nissan. Get in there, Scaife. And Jonesy down on the inside this time. Scaife still trying to fight back. The run down to Honda. We'll see whether Mark's able to respond at the next right-hander at the stop corner. Look no, he's Jones. just hits a little sideways there, and that gives Alan Jones the invitation he was looking for. Is some track cam again as Mark puts power to the road. Sierra just gets away a little bit. Tony taps the brakes just to stabilise the car on the turn in for the run on the pit straight. And uh, five cars now really scrapping for the lead as we reach the halfway point. Mark Gibbs bringing up the rear in that cluster, GIO Commodore, and he's doing a pretty good job in that car at the moment. Sure is. Wouldn't be Sorry. more than a second separating the top four cars. Not much in it. AJ looking for a 1-2 for the B&H team. Scaife disappointing his run at the moment. Number three, Nissan Skyline. But Bondi isn't out of it. He sits right on the tail of Jones. And uh, as Neil mentioned, Mark Gibbs, a heck of a performance here today in the GIO Commodore. Next time around, they'll have four laps to go. Fairly close stuff. Sprint racing with the Tourers. Here's Jonesy down the inside this time. And might well get it. Yes, he does, to the late corner. So the B&H team smoking the opposition at Amaru this afternoon. Longhurst through Jones second. Scaife then followed by Bond, who's fallen back into the clutches of Mark Gibson, the GIO Commodore. Great stuff. Here's Bondi. Last start winner, of course, at um, Lakeside. Surprising winner. A lot of people thought of the uh, the round there at the Touring Car Championship. Oh. <laughs> Jonesy keeps his foot in the bucket all the way, doesn't he? Yeah, well, they're not down to the tyre restriction rules here this weekend. I think probably AJ's gone through uh, a couple of sets of them. On our next telecast coming up at Malala in South Australia for the next round of the Shell Off Touring Car Championship, we can expect to see some interesting stuff once again as yeah. we look at Alan Jones under brakes. This is pretty interesting. Gets by his teammate quite comfortably. Last year, you recall, Colin Bond had pole there, so if he can uh, keep the form up from Lakeside, plus he knows his settings and things from last year, it's probably still a big chance for the next round. And the other good thing is just how competitive uh, Alan Jones is and what he's added to the touring car title this year. Here they come over the top of Nissan. Hey, hey, it's AJ. Longhurst back in second. Scaife has done a sterling job for Freddie Gibson and the Nissan team here today. They found a very business-like Alan Jones, though. 
it, he doesn't like for aggression nor skill the 1980 world formula one champ done jun just about everything from uh, indy cars sports cars can-am lamar you name it he's been all over the place and been very successful in all of the classes that he's attacked he dearly wants to be able to uh, become the king in the touring car scene here as well on the way here today at amaru park for the amscar series sat on pole at this circuit for the opening round of the, the Australian Touring Car Championship back in February. You wouldn't think that Amaru would rate as uh, one of the favourites of an ex-Formula One chap, but he, he quite likes the place. Good driver circuit. Cavalier Cole in the Caltex number eight machine. We've got Yokohama tyres first, second and third at the moment. That's been... Uh, significant pattern throughout some of the championship Ooh, Mark gives that time getting a bit sideways as he went through Sutton's coming down to the late quarter for the final time Alan Jones bounds along the short shoot headed for the side one lap to go and it'll be uh, a pair of wins today for uh, Jonesy in the Amscar series at Amaru Park leads teammate Tony Longhurst in the Benson and Hedges team cars to the top of uh, Nissan for the final time. Mark Scaife still running back in third. Colin Bond close to him and Mark Gibbs right on his tail. But there's the gap that Jones has been able to put on uh, teammate Tony Longhurst. Downhill still very very overcast here at Amaru Park but they're going to get the final half lap in before the rain arrives there's the split over the first five cars as they go to the right hander at the lake for the final time a short squirt along here brings him back onto the start finishing straight and check it flag time for Australia's ex Formula One champ Alan Jones he goes across to take the James Hardy building products Amscar route second goes to Longhurst third to Scaife fourth to Colin Bond and it looks like Mark Scaife, fifth across the line. Then comes Brian Callahan, the top qualifier of the uh, Commodore set here yesterday. Let's cap them for you on our Toyota race score. Jonesy, well done at Amaru today. Tony Longhurst in second. Mark Scaife finishes third. Bondi fourth. And fifth was Mark Gibbs. To Amaru Park Raceway. Winners are grinners, they say. Mark Scaife, you, you weren't a winner, but you'd be grinning after today's performance. Yeah, well, today's races were very very good actually between uh, Colin Bond and Tony and Alan we had some great racing and uh, the two 10 lap races proved to be pretty exciting I think. Tell me this you had a disappointing day as far as the uh, the uh, Gold Star round was concerned what happened? Yeah Mike I think it's done a diff uh, we got a pretty good start and uh, we're, we're looking pretty comfortable but then uh, coming out of uh, the slow corner over near the dam we come out and had no drive so that's one of those things that's racing. There's always another day. Sure is. Well done Mark. So, Tony Long has come in Tony You've had a, a sensational day here today, and it's been fairly lively between you and AJ. Yeah, uh, AJ's a good guy to race against. Actually, everyone that was here today, it's, it's good to get in there and have a good close race without uh, anyone punning you off the circuit. It'd be nice to see a few of the other guys come up and run. Uh, I think Peter or, or Glenn should come up and run in the next round. It must give you some heart, though, to come here, and you've, you've done well, or one two today, um, after the disappointment of uh, Lakeside. It's just one of those things, our cars are very, very fast now, and... Uh, We've just got to get a few things sorted out with the suspension and uh, I think we should be able to win some races as the year progresses. I'm sure you will. Congratulations. Thank you. And I guess the big winner of today, Alan Jones. Well done, AJ. Thanks, Mike. Was it uh, tough out there today? Yeah, it was, actually. Uh, it was good fun, though. It was good dicing with the boys. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We had a few giggles after the first heat. And then I was under the impression that whoever won the first heat got pole position for the second heat. But I was told that I had to start where I started from in the first heat. So uh, <laughs> I wasn't looking forward to that, but it was a great race. Well, you got Monaco later tonight, but a little plaque. OK. <laughs> well done. Thanks very much. Alan Jones, a big winner here at uh, Amaru Park Raceway today. And I guess the spectators were the real winner. Don't forget, two weeks from today, the next round of the Touring Car Championship of Australia comes to you from Malala. We look forward to your company then, once again, of course, on Seven Sport. Thanks again for your company at Amaru Park. We'll see you in a fortnight.
This motor racing telecast was proudly brought to you by Shell Ultra Unleaded, Experience the Difference, by the hot, hot, hot Toyota Corolla SX, and by Dunlop, the world's best road-holding tyres.